Frank Ryan, and thanks for letting me have the opportunity to be here today. I am a 60-year-old, three-year-old. I've spent my entire life asking why. If you have a young child, you ask him something, but why? Why? And when I started to see things throughout my corporate career, such as earnings no longer matter, we're in a new economy, I said, well, that doesn't make sense. We found out a couple years later that it does. I found out just a little while ago that GM's too big to fail. Maybe it's not. And then we turned around and we started hearing things such as home prices in different parts of the United States will keep increasing at a rate of 20% per year for the next 10 to 15 years. And I just did the math and I said, that doesn't make sense. So I was a young financial analyst. I just got out of the Marine Corps and I was sitting at Luke and Steel. And we said that we can continue to increase steel prices at this exorbitant rate for an extended period of time. And I said, that's absurd. We were paying people who were watching the gate approximately $50 an hour in the early 70s, and that doesn't make sense. So if the customer's not willing to pay for it, who does? And then most recently I heard a situation where it said, the nation's too big to fail. So as I started my entire practice and started looking at different areas of providing different types of material for corporations, what we started to focus on is question everything you have ever been taught. I taught economics at Franklin and Marshall College, and I have to explain something to you. My actual degree is in economics, not accounting. I was an economist in the steel industry, and the person I worked for was a CPA, and he said, you can lay economists from end to end and never reach a conclusion. To which I responded, if I had a personality, I would have been a mortician, but certainly not a CPA. So he then made me take the CPA exam, and I passed it on the first attempt. Because the CPA exam is an exam of logic. It's an exam in which you question the very critical thinking skills that's so important. And that's why being a CPA, I think, is so incredibly important. But as I became a CFO, as I became a, a chief operating officer of a company, and we'd start to make decisions if we had to close in a business transformation, if we had to close a division, I found that that, that which I thought we were going to save didn't happen. And when I then asked questions of my staff or myself, we'd find out, well, you can't really use the accounting systems to give you that. And I'd say, well, why not? They said, well, it's not based upon activity-based costs. So then as I started to look at new core steel and do a background analysis of new core steel, I saw that new core steel challenged the very way in which steel was made. They became a mini mill. They did it differently. And then I heard a person on Delta Airlines say that Southwest Airlines, I said, you mean Southwest? He said, no, Southwest. I said, how are you doing? So well, we've just emerged from bankruptcy. And then all of a sudden you recognize this business transformation and helping to keep companies reorganized and help keeping companies out of bankruptcy requires organizations to look at things entirely differently. You have to stay focused on the customer. When you hear things like New Coke, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that was, but it didn't do well. Vista, in which the probability of the computer working successfully after you installed it was zero. <laughs> Apple almost went into bankruptcy, and I think they're doing okay. And when you look at this transformation, what they did is they stayed focused on a strategy. That strategy was embodied in what is it that the customer wants and listens to. And then what they also then do is look at all the processes that are going on inside the organization, saying how does that reinforce the employee, the supplier, and every other person in the organization to better satisfy the customer. And what I get constantly concerned about in everything that we do, if what we are doing is because it's been mandated, not because it is what's necessary to satisfy the customer, you are only a stone's throw away from being obsoleted out. A healthcare system, as an example, that focuses on getting people better rather than helping people keep people well is an entirely misfocused system. A government that thinks that no matter what it does, it's not responsible to its customers, both those who need help and those who are paying the bill, is doomed to failure. So when you look at this entire idea of business trans transformation, it's society transformation. It's continuing ed transformation. It's the entire process of understanding 
what the customer wants, ask them, and give it to them. Thank you very much.